What is up you guys? So this one we'll be talking about condition variables. In the previous two lectures, we talked about mutex to synchronize the axis of common resource among threads. In this one, we'll talk about another synchronization issue which using mutex alone cannot help us to solve the problem. Now, let's say I'm in the following scenario. So let me clean up everything I used in the previous lecture. And let's say I've got a DQ over here, call it Q, and a mutex M. So I've got a func1 that has a counter. Let's initialize it to 10. So using a unique lock on this counter, so DQ is not defined. Try to include Qs. Solves the problem. So I don't want to push to the back. I'll push to the front. Okay. K each time. And then unlock. And you know, put this thread to sleep for, I don't know, one second. Okay. And decrement my counter. This is what function one does. On the other hand, say that I've got another function called func2 that accomplishes a really similar task. That is, I've got some data and i've got the certain operation going on if my data is not one then i'll open a mutex through unique lock on m and i'm going to test if my dq is empty or not if it's not empty i'm going to take the back of my q off back then unlock print the following message thread 2 got a value from thread 1 which is the data else if it's empty what do i do i just unlock it okay now in my main i'm going to trigger those two functions using threads so the first thread t1 will be applied on function one likewise another thread t2 will be applied on function two okay i'll call the join to join the threads also what we can do here is that put the thread to sleep for a bit so as we did in thread one or function one we'll put this to sleep not for a second but for milliseconds one for ten milliseconds so let's summarize a bit what's going on here so we've got a deck or a dq for those of you who don't know what a deck or dq is it's a double-ended queue okay so we've got a global dq and a mutex thread one has a while loop that pushes a number into the queue and then it sleeps for a second and then it goes to the next iteration function two or thread two has another while loop that keeps checking if it's empty or not if it's not empty it pops off the data then prints it out otherwise it goes to the next iteration so if you will thread one produces the data and function two consumes the data for both threads before they go ahead and access the queue that we have we lock a certain mutex m which is a good thing to do because q is a shared memory between two threads thread one and thread two so if the axis of the queue is not synchronized with a mutex then good luck <laughs> there will be a data race between them so that's good practice but on the other hand there's a problem thread two is in a busy waiting state it keeps checking if q is empty and if it is indeed empty it will unlock the locker and immediately go to the next loop. So it will keep looping. Now, a rule of thumb in concurrent programming is that busy waiting is very inefficient. So the question here is, the challenge here is, how can we make this more efficient? W one achievable way is, if the queue is empty, we put the thread into sleep. We tell it, hey, go take a nap or something. <laughs> and then we go to the next loop. This will indeed reduce the number of looping. So instead of, you know, performing, I don't know, a million while iterations in one second, it's now limited to this period. So here we've got a period of microseconds. So do the math, 10 microseconds. So in one second, so in one second, it's as if you're, you're performing 100,000 while iterations you can reduce this number by increasing this over here so if you want one so in the extreme case you want one iteration per second you just set this to one second right so yeah this number here is a problem and so how do we decide on this if it's too short then we'll be looping a lot so it's as if we did nothing we didn't solve this inefficient um busy waiting problem now if it's too long then we might skip the data over here it might not be able to get that oh 
we've got a one in our queue. So this number right here is very hard to find. Now this is where condition variables come in hand. So going back up here, in addition to the mutex, we also need a standard condition variable as such. Now, as you can see, the editor is yelling at me and it's telling me, oh, namespace STD has no member condition variable. We go back up here, we include condition variable as such. There you go. Okay. Now we go back down here after the locker unlock, we call in con dot notify, not all, but one. What will this do? It will notify one waiting thread if it exists, of course. And you go back down here to the waiting thread, thread two. This is all useless. We only need con dot wait on locker. Okay. This will put thread two in sleeping mode until being notified by thread one. So all in all, condition variables could enforce that thread two will go ahead and fetch the data only after thread one has pushed the data into the queue. That's very important. Said differently, it could enforce certain parts of the two threads to be executed in a predefined order. Now, the question here is, why does the wait function need the locker as a parameter. Keep in mind that at this point over here, the mutex is locked by thread two and a thread should never go to sleep while holding a mutex because you know, you're going to sleep. You're going to sleep, right? So why on earth would you need a mutex? You don't want to lock everyone out while you're sleeping, right? Because what if someone wants to come in, you're sleeping, you, you can't wake up and open. It's annoying. It's not practical. Right. So, you know, before the wait function, so before the wait function puts thread two into sleep, it will unlock the locker implicitly and then go to sleep. Once thread two has woken up, it will be notified by func one and it will lock the locker again, and then continue accessing queue. And after that, it will unlock locker. Okay. And since, you know, we have to lock and unlock the mutex many, many times, we have to use unique lock for the condition variable. We cannot use lock guard. Go ahead and use lock guard. You're going to end up with an error. So all looks good as long as, you know, thread two, while it's in waiting state, it could only wake up by the notify one function. But actually that's not the case. Thread two can wake up by itself. And that is called spurious wake. And if that's the case, if we have spurious wake, we don't want the thread to continue running. We want to put it back to sleep again. So the wait function could take in another parameter, which is a predicate. And it determines whether the condition is really met for the thread to continue running. And in this case, we'll use a Lambda function. There's the Lambda function over here when the queue is not empty. So if thread two wakes up and finds that the queue is empty, it will go back to sleep again. If the queue is not empty, it will go ahead and pop off the data. Another thing here to keep in mind is that there could be more than one thread that is waiting on the same condition. If that's the case, when you call notify one, it only wakes up one thread. If you want to wake up all the threads that are waiting on this thread at the same time, should call cond notify all. This guy will wake up all the threads. So with a condition variable, we can make sure that threads are running in a fixed order for a certain portion of their code. This example, this thread one will push the data into the queue first, and then notify thread two to resume running. Then thread two will pop off the data, process the data and go to the next loop then wait for the next data to be available. So it is what it is. Condition variable is good for these kind of scenarios to synchronize the execution of threads. So that's it for today. If you liked the video, please leave a thumbs up. If you found this video beneficial, also consider subscribing to my channel to provide support to the channel. And if you have any questions whatsoever, please leave a comment down in the comment section below and I'll make sure I'll get to it as soon as possible. Thank you so much and I'll see you in future lectures.